as we move into this more and more modern age where pretty much everything that we do on a daily basis involves some sort of internet connectivity, we need to examine how things actually get sent across the internet and how compression allows this to be more straightforward. So anything that we view online, whether we go onto YouTube, whether we go onto Netflix, you're, you are viewing online videos that are really high in file size. So sometimes these files need to be compressed, otherwise the connection would be really slow and it would take a long time to send data, data across. So data compression is when we make files smaller so they can be sent. The aim or the main idea is to make the file as close to its original form as possible. In other words, we don't want to lose quality because otherwise people are not going to be satisfied with what they see. I've put this slide here just as a little reminder because every time we're looking at data representation, it's really important that we remember the different sizes of files. So this little table shows how much they increase and which order they go in. But also at the bottom, just just a reminder that video files can be up to gigabytes in size. Audio files usually megabytes, but they can be bigger. Documents, you can have hundreds and hundreds of kilobytes, you can go up to gigabytes in size. One letter that you type on the keyboard is one byte. Okay, so with that in mind, compression will become a little bit more important as to why we need it. Okay, so in the examination, you could be asked, what, can, what do we need compression for? Why do we use it? So, different uses of compression. Smaller files take up less storage space on your device. So, most of you will ha all have a mobile phone of some description. Now, the more photographs, now, the more photographs that you take, the more space you're using on your phone. And I'm sure some of you have got to the point where you don't have any space left anymore. You have to either go through and delete all of your photos or you have to back them up to a cloud of some description. Okay, now compression would allow you to store more files if you compressed a lot of them. It would save up space. Okay, so streaming and downloading files from the internet is quicker as they take up less bandwidth. Now from the networking section you should understand a little bit about what bandwidth is. But if you think of it like a tunnel, you can only fit so many cars through the tunnel. You've only got so many lanes of data. That is your bandwidth, is how much you can fit through. So if we compress files, it means you can get more information through your bandwidth. So it would be like making all the cars smaller so that they fit through. Okay, it also allows you to load your web pages quicker. So if all of the information on the web page is compressed, the website will load faster and you will see the content quicker. Email services sometimes have file restrictions. So if you're trying to attach a document or a video of some description, sometimes it says that the file is too big. So compression would allow us to make this file smaller, which would mean you could send this to whoever you wanted. Okay, it's really important now that you understand the two different categories of compression. We have lossy and lossless. They're pretty easy terms to remember because they're quite straightforward what they mean. So with lossy compression, it means that you're going to lose something. So permanently, permanently removes the data from the file, limits the number of bits the file needs and reduces its size. Okay, lossless compression means that nothing is lost. So temporary removes the data to store the file and then restores it to its original state. So nobody will notice any difference between when you've set when you've done it originally and when you've compressed it, the quality should be exactly the same. Okay, so with lossy, let's take a look at some of the advantages, disadvantages. You can see on the example images you can't really notice much difference in the quality between the pictures. So its main advantage is that you can't really tell. So in other words, so in other words, you could save something as a JPEG image and you could compress it and no one would really notice that there was that much difference in quality. Okay. However, once you've lost that data, it can't be restored. 
So once you've compressed the image and saved it as a JPEG, you can't, re can't restore its original quality. Okay, another advantage is that less bandwidth is needed. So you've obviously compressed the file dramatically and you can send it and it'll send a lot quicker than it would before. This advantage can't be used on text or software files. In other words, you can't get rid of data from a Word document, can you? You're going to notice if words are missing out of the file. So you can't just get rid of random data. It's not going to work. Another advantage is it's commonly used and easily open. So when you save a JPEG image, anybody can open that image. It's really common. Anybody can do it and anyone can see what you've done. Major disadvantage is the quality is worse than the original. You do lose some data. So even though we can't tell much difference between the pictures on this slide, if I put it on a really, really big display, then the quality is going to be obviously different. The major, major, major use of lossy compression is that it greatly reduces the file size. If you look at the difference from the picture on the left, 824 kilobytes, down to 38 kilobytes, now that's a massive reduction. Okay, so let's take a look at lossless with its advantages and disadvantages. If you look at the example, you can see a little bit how this works and you might be familiar with it. If you've seen a PNG file before, an image, you'll find that a lot of them, if you search for something and put PNG afterwards on Google, on Google, you'll find images where it looks like the background's being removed. Now what I call this is redundant data, so nobody needs to see a white background, nobody needs to see a transparent background. So you can remove all of those pixels to reduce the file size. It's not needed, it's unnecessary data. So the main advantage of using lossless compression is you don't lose any reduction in the quality. There's, there's literally nothing lost. It will look just as clear as the original. This advantage is it doesn't reduce the file size very much because you need to keep the quality you can only reduce a certain amount of data. Another advantage is it can be decompressed and restored to its original quality. In other words, even if you do get rid of the redundant pixels or whatever it is you want to get rid of, you can always restore it to its original quality. There's ways and means which you do this, which you'd look at for A-level. For example, things like dictionary encoding, where you might take a Word document and give certain words numbers instead of the word say the word is i don't know encyclopedia and you've used it 15 times in one document you could replace that word with a number instead and it, can, and it will make it a lot smaller instead of it being so many bits to store that word it will be a lot less just to store one number so you've you've compressed the file you've made it a lot smaller but then it uses a dictionary to restore all the words back to its original form when you decompress it. So all the quality stays the same. Another disadvantage is not all software programs can open them. If you've created a PNG, sometimes it asks you to use Fireworks to open it. For example, you might not have this installed. It's the same with some of the other file types as well. You might not be able to open them. Finally, another advantage is you can use it on any type of file so you can use it on software you can use it on text files you can use it on audio video anything that you like the key giveaway here is lossless if you just look at the word less at the end lossless means that you don't lose any okay in the exam you might just be asked what type of files could be used or it might refer to a particular file type and expect you to understand which type of compression they'll use so the main types of file that you would have for lossy compression is a jpeg image file an mp3 audio file and an aaac audio file and finally example file types for lossless could be png for an image flac for audio and a tiff file for an image thanks for watching this video i hope you found it helpful please like and subscribe Bye.